Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs Babyface, and we're back now in the heart of fear. Yes, we're yo-yoing between dungeon testings, where we're taking on Windlord Mel Durak. And firstly, thanks Blaze for calling a boss Mel. It really helps somebody like me when you have all these bloody weird names. And this video I'm going to show in real time, and it's actually a kill vid as well. And I wanted to show it in real time more specifically, though, because this fight is heavy on coordination. And the boss itself has nine ads that are broken up into three groups of three to help him out. And they're made up of the Srathic Amber Trappers, the Zarthic Battle Menders, and the Corthic Elite Blade Masters. And each group has the ability called Fate of the Swarm, where they share an HP pool. Now... You can CC four out of these nine ads at the start of the fight, and scattered around the side are weapon racks, which you can throw a spear into the ad, and it will keep them trapped for 50 seconds. Then there's no cooldown on this uh, spear itself, which maybe Blizz should introduce, so you can re-CC and reset the 50 seconds at any time, and believe me, it's not a bad idea to just really keep on top of that. If, though, you decide to CC more than the four, the boss will activate an ability called Watchful Eye, and he will remove all CC aspects from every single ad, and they will all become active, and that will pretty much screw the raid. So be very, very careful indeed about the four CCs. Now, we decided to focus our attention first on the Amber Trappers, because they had a couple of nasty little abilities. They had a prison, an Amber Prison, which kept you completely stunned until somebody physically right-clicked onto you to break it, but they would then get a 45-second debuff, preventing them from breaking anyone else out of a prison. And then you can see all these corrosive pools on the floor. That's a byproduct of their corrosive resin ability, where they put five stacks of this on you, and it ticks for 10k per stack per second, so that's 50k a second damage. And the only way to remove the stacks is to actually run around, and each time you run around, it dumps one of the corrosive stacks on the floor so just be mindful where you're running now once they were killed the boss gains an ability called recklessness which increases his damage by 50 percent but it also makes his damage taken increase by 50 percent and his watchful eye ability becomes more potent so instead of being able to cc four targets you can now only cc two so what we did is we then took out the two healers, two of the three healers, and brought one of the healers into the fight. We DPS now the battle masters, who don't do particularly much. They have a ganking ability where they'll all jump on one target and do 150k each. So that's 450k. So if you're clothy, you could get one shot by them. So just be careful, healers, with your shields and whatnot mitigations. And we decided to burn the battle masters down to near, but not quite low health and then we focused our target uh, our attentions onto the battle menders and what we wanted to do was literally get the last group of ads because they have a shared health pool both nearly dead literally very very nearly dead and then we could blast them down with aoe and wipe out two packs for the price of one which would then allow us to jump always straight onto the boss Without any fear of the battle menders healing them up or the blade masters running riot, just ganking individuals. And it was a tactic that actually did work. So we're really happy about that. The healers themselves, the reason why you've got to be so careful with them is they have two healing abilities. And the first one is the mending ability, which is interruptible. But if it gets through, we'll heal each pack for 15% of their HPs. And if you think if three of the packs get active, that's 45% of the HPs bang back straight away. But more importantly, they have an ability called Quickening, which is dispellable, but it will increase the attack speed of whatever it does by 25% for 15 seconds and stacks. So if it starts to do that on the boss, then the tank can easily get into a situation where it ends up being one shot. So all the packs are down, we've hired off uh, Time Warp and got the DPS going, uh, look at that, 482k crits, 680k crits, there are some nice little numbers now being flown around the actual fight itself, and the boss doesn't have 
too many abilities. He could maybe have a little bit more about him. He's got something called Whirling Blade, where he'll physically target one of the raid members and throw a blade at them, which will hit them for 80k damage. Also, any raid members that are between the blade going there and back will also be hit for that 80k. And he has another ability called Reign of Blades, which does 25k damage to each of the raid members. And he does this normally in a volley of three. So you'll be taking, you know, 25k, 25k, 25k. But as you saw from what I took then, he's actually hitting us for around 44k because of buffs. Because he's now got that recklessness buff up to 150% more damage. But again, 150% extra damage taken. So the boss is down. We've actually got some loot off it as well. It's a very interesting fight. The coordination has to be spot on. It looked relatively easy, but trust me, it wasn't. And if you get your coordination off, you're going to be in for a big, big round of wiping. So I hope you enjoyed the vid. Please do like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash heel versus babyface. And I shall be back with some more stuff very, very soon. You take care, everybody. Bye-bye.